Hello, folks. How's it going? I'm Charlie from Christmas on Crescent. What? Oh, I still got music playing somewhere. Maybe mute that bad boy. There we go. All right. So we are here live today to talk about one thing and one thing only, and that is a new way to decorate your home for Christmas. Um, projection mapping. And today with me, I have a very special guest, sir. Could you tell the people who you are and what you do? Hey guys, I'm Delvin Editor. I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. By profession, I'm an electrical engineer, but you can call me an holiday enthusiast too as well right now. So. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, my, my wife is also an electrical engineer, so I did not know you're an engineer by trade, so we, you, know, you two have that in common. And I'll do a quick roll call. See, like, so I've got Crepe, who's stuck at work. Work takes the fun out of the weekends, I tell you. Uh, Dram Fam to in. He's a, he's a regular on our other show. Stacy Parsons. Hey, Charlie managed to make it today. Looking forward to the live. And Stacy, thank you for reminding me. I would have forgotten. Stacy, folks, just charted, started a new Facebook Christmas uh, enthusiast chat forum. So, Stacy, if you would be so kind here at some point today and put that into the chat so folks can do that. Uh, we're going to ask a lot of, we're going to dive, do a deep dive into projection mapping here, guys. Um, but uh, our guest today runs and owns Projection Mapping Academy. There is a 25% discount code with the code being CRESTLINE. The link is down in the video's description. Um, so with, with that being said, can you tell us what in the world is projection mapping? So projection mapping, yeah, I know the term kind of sounds fancy. So essentially, it is decorating using a projector. So what projection mapping is, is rather than projecting on a flat screen, you project onto 3D surfaces. So can I just share my screen quick? So probably yeah. be a better demonstration. So give me a second. OK, I hope you guys can see me. See the screen so uh, cannot, the most... we cannot see the screen yet no oh i mean can you see youtube no we can just see you, you, myself here so folks what we're going to do today is we're going to do some sh oh, screen sharing so bear with us so he oh there we go all right here we go yeah so probably this is the one of the most common applications that most people have seen for projection mapping it's disney's castle so essentially what they're doing here is they got a bunch of projectors projecting on the castle and it's a 3D surface. And, and essentially in this case, they're using like 16 projectors, which are extremely expensive. Thankfully, we don't have to do that. But what they're doing here is projecting all kinds of textures and patterns and transitions. Technically, the possibilities are endless and that's how they manage all these effects. Similarly, give me a quick second. You might have seen projection mapping as well. All they have is a sheet on the car and there are multiple projectors projecting on the car, making, giving all sorts of cool transitions and effects on the car. So this is basically projection mapping and we could use mm. this exact same technology to achieve decorations for a house too. Very cool. So it's basically just taking a, an image and projection that onto a 3D image that gives a sort of an illusion, correct? Correct. So you can project images, videos, pretty much anything you want on a static 3D object. So the 3D object kind of comes to life. So uh, Curry in the States uh, asks us to wash the hands. Chris just is now popping up. What's up, Chris? Good to see you in here. And uh, Berto works on the weekends. <laughs> That's no good. Um, so... This uh, and I've heard of, and not we, we were talking before the live started. My first uh, dive into no, my first acknowledgement that this technology exists is when my family and I went to Orlando and we went to Disney. The parks closing for their finale. They made Cinderella's castle turned into a moving, gigantic video screen, um, and I'm like. That's amazing. I need to eventually do this. And you teach all things projection mapping, and you you own the Mapping Academy. Can you That's tell us what the Mapping Academy is? Yeah. So so basically, when I was trying to get into projection mapping and learn how this is done, so there's a bunch of 
weeks and months spent in researching the available technology and if this is even possible for a house. So essentially, Projection Mapping Academy is where I, I put everything I learned as a source of knowledge for everyone else to learn and consolidated all the good, the bad, and filtered out what works best and in a budget-friendly fashion. As you can see on screen, this is the this is the planned haunted mansion projection mapping that I'm planning for this year for Halloween. So this is my house, and trust me, I didn't break the bank to achieve this. That's always a good thing to not break the bank. Yeah. Uh, and that's another thing you're talking about cost effectiveness. Uh, I probably have about twenty thousand dollars ish uh, invested in my Christmas light show. Uh, your big guys, um, oh uh, Tom Bet George, and a bunch of the, the bigger names in the industry have hundreds of thousands of dollars in theirs. Uh, what kind of jumping ahead here? What's what's the basic cost for uh, projection mapping? Yeah, for a detailed cost, I've actually done a video on my YouTube channel that gives a cost breakdown because everyone's going to be different for low medium and high budget so i have done that but for me personally i can give you a quick rundown the projector i've used on I've, i'm mainly using two projectors one for the front and one for the side the projector i'm using on the front is an octoma 1080 it retails for about 850 dollars but i got it on ebay so it's 500 bucks and the one on the side is an Epson. I literally got it for seventy dollars on eBay, but that's all, that was a good deal. But on a on a normal day, you can still find it for like two hundred bucks. So it's not like I found something that was like at an unreasonable discount. So five hundred dollar projector on the front, like seventy buck projector on the side, and you need a couple of other things like a weatherproof enclosure, a media player. Those are not gonna drastically increase your cost so my setup is about a thousand bucks all included nice and one great thing i see for myself projection mapping and i eventually see myself converting completely over to projection mapping just because there's no more climbing trees there's no more my back going out there's no more no more heavy lifting and you can do all sorts of illusions for every freaking holiday um yeah and no more storage required anywhere yes <laughs> yes storage i Mind blown. I, didn't, I forgot about storage because these are all kind of what, what What are the benefits other than what I'm talking about here and what, what we've already oh. mentioned? What are the benefits of projection mapping versus oh. traditional AC or pixel light shows? Yeah, so I'll actually give you a quick rundown and maybe I'll just start with the cons just to be upfront here. So w one of the cons for projection mapping is the traditional lights are going to be more bright per unit area. For example, like the lights are going to be bright at that particular spot, but projector gives you a better overall coverage, of course. And it depends uh, to a certain extent on ambient light. Like if it's a big glaring street light, it's going to affect the lights a little. And if there are cars that are beaming headlights on your house, it does affect brightness because that's gone because darkness is kind of preferred for projection to work right like you see in movie halls but of course if you're spending twenty thousand dollars on lights you could just get a better brighter projector to overcome those difficulties minus just a five hundred dollar projector like i said so right. those difficulties can be overcome and you need a good location for example if you have a bunch of trees and if you don't have enough clearance in your front yard those are some challenges that we can work around but those are challenges that probably lights don't have and in, in case you have a extremely dark house that does not reflect enough light that could be a challenge but again most challenges can be overcome by just upping your budget on the project yeah it makes sense the, the better the equipment the better your show uh yeah, and stay Stacy's asking what software you use for your programming. Oh, so me personally, I use DaVinci Resolve, which is a completely free video editing software. So I don't spend a dime on editing at all. So DaVinci, yeah, DaVinci Resolve, Re Resolve, I was ignorant that, to that until I started going through your academy classes. Uh, yeah, it, it, it is absolutely as powerful as Adobe After Effects and full-fledged Hollywood movies have been edited on DaVinci Resolve. So just because it's free doesn't mean it's not powerful. It is extremely powerful and you can do even cool 3D stuff on it. We're, we're talking a second ago about um, 
trees and bright headlights what are some other natural barriers to, to your landscape with mapping is it just trees and bushes um what yeah, about the color different. of your house yeah that could be a challenge too like some people might have extremely dark bricks or so the main thing is how much light the surface of your house reflects being dark doesn't necessarily mean it's bad because some of your movie screens that you buy are actually black or green color it's just how much light they reflect so that is a factor of course but for standard purposes the projector i personally use works that's one of the barriers and you might need some space in your front yard so that you can cover your entire house things like that and yeah i, I know you mentioned a question earlier about the benefits i didn't get a chance to get over it so i quickly touch upon the benefits like there's no going up on the roofs anymore and trying to <laughs> install and remove the lights every season plus it's plus your creative bandwidth is like you can do literally anything you want you can pull a clip, clip of youtube or any movie and you can play anything like there's complete freedom absolutely to what you can think of you can create any 3d content you can put that in here it's flexible mm -hmm. for holidays for example this is halloween I I use the exact same setup for Christmas. Get a gingerbread house right there. So can, can you play that for them for a little bit so they can kind of see it a little bit? Oh, oh yeah. Here we go. I hit play. So and then the, and apart from that, the money you're spending on a projector, you can watch movies rest of the year on the same projector. So you still get money's worth, you know. So it's not like the projector has to be used only during holidays again like i said there's no storage and there's no right. 3d illusions you can achieve with a projector yeah yeah that's true you can just because you use it for your holidays you can also take it inside and use it as your as your video screen for a while uh carl tuned like in your... from carl's tuning in Go from ahead. uh new zealand says that uh, you did what we all want to do you would learn new ideas and le learn new tech for christmas displays it's a great way to make it easy for us and personally looked at it and makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, and, and it is surprisingly easy. When I got into it, I thought it would be extremely tricky. I've been on YouTube doing other stuff. So I have been video editing in DaVinci Resolve, which is not extremely difficult. So I was like, hey, this isn't too bad. In fact, in case we have time later, I could do a quick demo of how it works. Oh, yeah. Live right here. Um, Dwayne's want to know how many projectors do you use to create the effect you're showing us right now? This is just two. There's one projector up front. There's an Optoma that covers the complete front of the house. And there's an Epson projector that covers the left. So essentially, it's just two projectors that I use. So let me pause. So do you guys see here? Let me full screen this thing. So do you guys see this glowing box right here? That's yeah. my projector. Yeah, that's it. So that's the projector that's complete covering the entire front of this house. And wow. another one sitting on the fence that covers the entire side. Oh, okay. So. Very cool. Oh, we got a we got a super sticker coming in. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Carl, for, for, for supporting the show. Appreciate that about you. Appreciate that about you, Carl. Um, so to start mapping, to start this, whole process yeah. what equipment specifically is needed to map your home oh so the very basic the bare equipment is of course a projector that's basically what you need and of course a laptop so i'm not even going to count that because everyone has <laughs> right. one. so that's it and what you need to do is you need to figure out a place where you can get in the adequate coverage you can cover your entire house and the location has to be fixed that's when you map the house so essentially you place the projector at a position where you cover the house and that position needs to be locked and you can start mapping so it's called a mapping file it's nothing crazy it's just outlines of what your projector sees and i'll touch base on that when i show you the live demo of a, a quick edit so once you do that that file is there with you you don't have to do that process again and then you just jump into your video editor and create all sorts of content and then you just play it like any other video file that's it and for video editor you're talking about davinci resolve is that correct yeah that's right okay uh so 
for the hardware, it's the projector, it's the weather boxes, um, okay. and for the software, it's DaVinci Resolve, and you need a computer, of course. Yeah, and, and like, yeah, if you're talking about slightly more enhanced setup, of course, like you mentioned, the weather boxes so that it doesn't rain outside and wreck everything, and probably a media player so that you don't have your laptop and a long HDMI cable running. So it, you, I just took a $30 media player in there, that's it. And okay. sometimes for the enclosure, just to keep it cool, I have a couple of fans in there. So it's nothing crazy. The setup's not crazy at all. To get going, all you need is a projector, but to keep it out there in the open for the season, you need an in box that runs standalone, an enclosure. Okay, I just posted the link to the Projection Academy in the chat. If anyone wants to purchase that, uh, use the discount code Crestaline. And you get a twenty five percent discount. Now you talked about media player. Can you can you uh, for the folks that don't know what you're talking about? Can you simplify that a little bit more? You talk about a USB, an SD card. What kind of media player do you speak of? Oh, oh give me a quick second. So okay. the the media player is you know what? Let me just pull it up. I'll just be so. And for those that do join the academy with us, I just now started chapter three. Uh, so you guys need to catch up with me because I, I plan on getting this done by this Christmas with his help uh, to do, or I'm sorry, by this Halloween to do a little something. Okay. So yeah, essentially, yeah, this is the media player. All I'm talking about, it's a tiny little box and all it has is an HDMI out. This one has Android in it. So it's, like I said, it's 30 bucks. That's it. So I stick this in the box. And you can put a USB. I have a flash drive with my file on there, but this has internal storage as well. So I just transferred it and it's out there. You have a remote. So you once it's in the box, everything can be controlled with the remote. That's all I do. Very cool. What what do you use to for the audio? Do you have speakers out on your front yard or how, how yeah. do you allow the audience to hear your audio? Yeah, so... You, there are multiple ways people do it. Some people use FM transmitters and stuff. For me personally, I don't have a big enough crowd. And my setup is, I, I don't want to create a super complex setup. So I have Bluetooth weatherproof speakers. No, nothing crazy. Give me a second. I will link to that right. as well. I'll pull that up. Okay, right here. Okay, so th this is literally the speakers that I use nothing it's not some 400 dollar speaker they're just weatherproof and i use an aux cable because though this supports bluetooth and the media player supports bluetooth using bluetooth sometimes gives you a lag so in order to have perfect sync it's best to just use cables so that's right. why i just and I, I i don't even stick this in the weatherproof enclosure it's just sitting outside because the speaker itself is weatherproof yeah, looking at the design there with the water they're showing, I'm guessing that's an IP65 or 66 rating. Yeah, this one's an IP66. Very nice. Uh, what are the initial costs uh, of mapping? Is it other? Well, the the, the software we, we haven't even mentioned this. The, the the DaVinci software is free. Is that correct? Yeah, that's completely free. There is a paid version for it where you can use more enhanced AI features, but that's not required for this at all. Like there is a paid version, but the free version does completely what you need. So the graphics and the special effects that you use yeah. in mapping, are they shareable between users? If if I create something for my show and something in Baltimore wants to borrow, is that something I can just share and email them or how does that work? Yeah, so I'll give you a quick rundown. Give me a second. So as you can see, so, so this is basically what the course looks like when you get in. So essentially, there's a step where you map the house. So I'll jump into the live editing. Give me a second. So here we go. OK, can you guys see? This is Javinci Resolve. Give me a quick second. Let me set up my sure. screen. OK, so this is Javinci Resolve. As you can see, this is just an image file. This is not. This is not nothing fancy. It's just called mapping file. That term probably sounds super techy, but it is just an <laughs> image and an outline of my house. So basically what this does is this is what my house looks like from the perspective of the projector. 
So usually there are a bunch of people, like including me, vendors who sell shows. For example, if you made a mapping file for your house and you send it to me and you wanted the Haunted Mansion show, you could buy that from me. You can't just take the show as is and play because every house is different and we have to customize the show to, for your house. So that's essentially how it works. Very nice. You say that you can't um, just share the exact show because it is uh, curtailed towards the dimensions of your home. But what about like a, a, a spider or something, a, a specific uh, effect that you'll create towards your own house? Is that, is that something yeah. shareable between people? Oh, yeah, yeah. So so the, the, there's a bunch of sites where you can buy a lot of effects, So like a spider climbing. So those are all standalone effects. There are a lot of sites like Halloween effects. Maybe a lot of you might have heard about Atmos effects. So they sell a lot of digital decorations. Let me pull that up too. So for example, this is one of the major players where you can buy digital decorations. So you can buy stuff from them and then integrate them as part of the show. So these guys, these are designed mainly to just project on your windows, and they look pretty cool, but they don't look 3D or anything. But right. Them as part of the show. And what's the name of this site? Just Halloween decorations. Th this one is Atmos FX. Atmos FX. Yeah. This is probably like the biggest seller of digital content, but there are huh. a bunch of smaller ones too. Like, I guess. Uh, okay. We got another yeah, super chat. Yeah. Kitty Cash is awesome. Just came with a two dollar. Appreciate you supporting the show. Kitty Cash is awesome, indeed. <laughs> and Gene, Gene is also awesome. Cool. Yeah, and in case there's no questions, I can quickly run through a quick demo of how it's done. Yeah, it'd be cool. I think everybody here would like to see that. Cool. So basically what we did is we placed the projector, drew an outline of the house. So now this, in this case, it's my house. So basically we know what the projector is looking at. Now for this demo purpose, I have an image, a bunch of bricks, literally downloaded from Google. It's nothing that I created. It's just a bunch of bricks. And then what I just do is I have reduced the Transparent. So all I need to do is use this as a reference and then customize the bricks image that I just downloaded so that I can have the same shape. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So I can see the shape of my house. So when you want to project, you don't want to project everywhere because you don't want the trees to look like bricks and the house, your neighbor's house to look like bricks. So what I'm going to do is cut it up so that it's exactly the size of my house. So Give me a quick second. Yeah. So here we go. I'm going to jump right in. And and I go through the detailed steps describing every button, everything, how it's done. So what we are going to do is a step called masking, where I'm just going to cut up the bricks to the shape of the house. I'll do it super fast. I won't be extremely precise. Yeah, I remember this part in, the, uh, in your Academy tutorial. I remember watching yeah. you do this as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and the thing I do go through detail steps in there. So right. I just so so that's step one. I'll just do the side of my house as well. And there's there's also the there's uh, David who's uh, he he runs Learn Christmas Lighting. He has a Learn Christmas Lighting Academy, and there's a lot of similarities between the your projection academy and his Lighting Academy because it's step by step tutorial on how to do everything and why everything should be done, uh, which I appreciate it because I, I I learn visually is how I learn. Uh, so I appreciate you taking this the time to realize hey nobody knows as much as as you do at that particular point in time and you, you're a good teacher on it so you do good work yeah cool thank you so, so all we've done here is we took the mask and we cut up the bricks to the shape of the house that's all we did for this simple example and if we projected that i have a test run already in here so this is what it look like basically if we projected the bricks that i just showed Super easy. These black things are my shutters. Sadly, mm. not lucky enough in terms of shutters. They're black, so they don't reflect anything. And it's too much hassle to 
hang something on the shutter so that they reflect. And a couple of quick updates that we could do is cut up the windows and stuff. In this case, like, so what will look like once you have the windows gone, you'll be more realistic. And here, this particular surface right here, this kind of kills the vibe. So what you need to do in projection mapping to give a 3D effect is the different surfaces do need to look at an angle, they, they do need to turn around and stuff, like okay. match the angle. Like the bricks here are completely stretched. So for that, you have to turn it around. So that's what makes it seem like the house is what is made of bricks rather than like a big movie screen. So, right. And it, yeah, it's that easy that what you do. And again, like this is just, as you saw, I just did it based on one image from Google. And there are multiple layers. You can pretty much dump anything. You could play a movie on your garage, a YouTube video. You can have green screen footage from YouTube. Dump everything in there. That was going to be another question I had. Or um, you, you can like Google green screen Santa Claus or green, green spotter and use that effect in your show, correct? Exactly. Yeah, that's pretty much what I do in most cases. Yeah. And th that's why I go through that in the course as well because YouTube has so many green screen effects that you can pretty much just use that in most cases. What are some common mistakes that people make when they when they start mapping yeah. to avoid? Like here's a bunch of green. Oh, so common mistakes. Yeah. I kind of have a look. So one of the most common mistakes is the projector settings because the projector usually oh. has a bunch of settings like economy, bright, and stuff like that. Sometimes you're not setting it to the brightest setting. So your performance is not the absolute best you can get. So that's one of the most common mistakes that I have noticed. So, and then another common mistake is trying to achieve something super crazy at the get-go. So what that what happens is you end up spending up a lot of time and then it's kind of overwhelming. It's always best to build, like you saw, hey, there's a bunch of bricks I could do. And it's very easy to scale up rather than trying to do them absolute best effect you can think of. So that's one of the things. And a couple of things when it comes to shows, what I've noticed is sometimes you make a nine minute long show, it looks super cool, but for the audience, they like the complete house color and everything to change instantly. And a one or two minute show works more, like more, it keeps, holds their interest longer. That's what I've noticed. Yeah, I think the same thing is also true for uh, yeah. Christmas light shows. Uh, I, yeah. I think audience prefer like a three minute song versus a 12 minute Metallica, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. Think so. and, and the 3D aspect, like the the surfaces that are not flat should not look flat when you project because that's kind of what gives the entire 3D illusion. So like, for example, the surface here as you can see is actually turning as opposed to flat they are different so that's what right. makes it look look 3d as opposed to stretched images so those are those are key aspects what are do you, do you suggest any forms or websites for, for for a beginner to go to so people are in the chat today if they want to join your academy um yeah what what forms or websites do you recommend yeah, so so when you join the academy, you do get access to a Facebook group as well, where you can pretty much, while you're going through the course, if you have any questions, you can ask them in there. But the biggest forum, I would say, is Facebook has a bunch of holiday projection mapping groups where you can ask questions and you can get a lot of opinions. And once you search through the content, most likely the questions you have have already been asked and you'll get most of your answers right there. The only downside with a Facebook group is what I noticed and the reason I created the course is sometimes the question was, hey, how do I mask? And I can't really put all the answers, though I want to, in a Facebook comment. It's extremely tricky. It, like I have to show how it's done and right. I can't answer in a comment. That's mainly one of the reasons I made a video course. But those Facebook groups are extremely good with good people. All are supported. Uh, so Kitty Cash is asking, uh, says it was a little late to today's show, but can any projector work with the software or does it have to be a special one that can control the software? Oh, so the requirements for a projector is mainly, 
ideally it should be a short throw projector what a short throw projector is it projects a big image without requiring it to be too far away so most traditional projectors are long throw projectors so to cover a house of this size they'll have to be at a significant distance so today you get projectors that are long throw short throw and as well as ultra short throws that can be extremely close and project a big image for this one you ideally need a short throw projector that works well there are other projectors that can work well too as long as the projector covers your house that's the only criteria and as i understand it the short throw projectors are just better suited to be in closer to the object is that correct that's that's exactly right like if you have a long throw projector and you can cover the entire house and if it's bright enough it will work perfect as well it's just that in most cases that specs will kind of tend to be expensive what's like, I like, like my house is kind of a darker color what uh is there and i'm ignorant to this are the projector bulbs um when you talk about brightness is there a certain bulb strength i should look for Correct. So the brightness is measured by a spec called ANSI lumens, and the word ANSI is pretty A N S I. That's important because most Amazon projectors that are like fifty bucks and seventy bucks would claim to be nine thousand ANSI lumens. That won't work. So in the ballpark of three to four thousand ANSI lumens should do a decent job. Anything over would be awesome. Okay. Like it's three about 3000 or 3500 lumens it's workable it's practical to do a show but anything over is awesome like this one right here is a 3800 ansi lumen project is there a certain website or store that you recommend to buy projectors from uh not really i for example you can of course buy it on amazon me personally i got it on ebay the only downside for buying used ones is you got to know that it still works and the image is not distorted in any fashion like there's no scratches on the lens and stuff Ooh. and mainly when it comes to projectors especially these kinds the projector life is based on the lamp so of course you can switch lamps they they don't cost too much like probably a couple hundred dollars maybe but mm -hmm. if you're buying a used one you know you need to ensure how much lamp life is remaining very nice Let's see. And what what is the what's a favorite show that you've created for your own home? Is there do you have a do you have a favorite design? Oh, so for me, yeah. Like technically, this was probably the haunted mansion was probably one of the most challenging ones. But in terms of just watching a fun show, one of my initial shows actually, my wife created that one. So it's not me. She she actually just looked at the course and she's the more creative one amongst us. Like. As you might have noticed, I'm more of the technical guy, knowing how to get things done, but she's the more creative one. Let me pull it up. Oh, you know what? So it's it's an Adams family show. That's probably my favorite one. Okay. Yeah. I'll just I should have been better prepared. Oh, no worries. No worries. We're at, we're, we're off the script here now. We're just asking whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah. I appreciate you taking the time and answering the questions for us. Uh, yeah. Kit, Kitty Cash wants to know, what do you put the um, projectors inside a protector from the weather? Oh, yeah. So, it, so our objective is just to keep it safe from the elements. So all I use is a $12 box a tote from walmart that's literally what i use you know what gotcha. i can give you an insight into the course so in the course i do go through detail step of how to make the yeah uh, details through how to make the enclosure as well and i do go through the different options available there are there are websites where you can buy the complete setup but my enclosure is like 50 bucks that's it as you can see yeah that's my father-in-law working on yeah. the box helping me out so it's nothing crazy it's just a box from walmart i cut up the front stuck a piece of glass there and have my projector in there and the complicated setup down here is because i had to raise my projector a bit because my house is sort of on a hill 
that's mainly the reason why I had to have it up. So this is what it looks like. As you can see, there's a I have a tripod sitting up there. This is my projector. Mm -hmm. And this thing, the vent looks pretty ugly, but I've improved it. I've used a floor vent right now, so it's flush now. This looks pretty bad. This is the best thing I could come up with at the time. So yeah, as you can see, it's like literally 12 bucks. This is right. what I bought. And uh, Carl asked, are you going to show how to build a projector? But you you do, this is a video on your course that shows how to build this course. Um, and there's also weatherproof encasements you can use for like a, a pixel light shows. Use them all the time for our control boxes. Yeah. I use them myself. Um, those are usually 50 to $100. But yeah. this is a cheaper version that you show us how to build. Correct. And, and I, I go through options that you can buy on other sites as well you can buy like for example this is a site digital press works that's that sells the complete setup it comes with projector as well as media player fans everything installed so mm -hmm. if you're not very handy like i am you can even just buy the complete setup. and, and I, I apologize i took you off i took you down a rabbit hole can you show us that yeah. your your wife's uh design that oh, you're getting ready to show us before i interrupted you oh yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, so this one right here so this is just one of the very first shows we did and it was just just the front at that point i didn't even have the side of my house mapped i didn't have my second projector it's just the colors change pretty cool and with music it's pretty nice so i just like this one because as you can see you can pretty much come up with anything that you want yeah, you, yeah. He has a uh, guys. He has a he has some cool Harry Potters. And actually, let me, I have your. I think I have the Academy pulled up, don't I? Yeah. Um, that's asking me to sign in again. Um, anyway, yeah. He you have a bunch of pre-programmed uh, shows, Haunted Mansion, Harry Potter, uh, a bunch of different ones. And I always like when like the garage door raises up or people are peeking yeah. out the windows. I like those effects. Oh, yeah, yeah. And in terms of garage door, I think this is kind of cool. So this is where your creative creativity comes in handy and pretty much you can do anything. So this was a Stranger Things we did last year. And if you see this particular effect right here, it's my real garage door. But I'm actually just projecting my image from the garage door. And this looks kind of real as the actual kids sitting in my garage. I feel it's kind of right. cool. So... Yeah, if you guys are fans of Stranger Things, you could turn your whole house into a Stranger Things show. Yeah. Yeah. And also, yeah. at some point uh, this year, in the next hopefully six weeks or so, uh, he will be designing a show for my house. So stay tuned to see that because I will show that later this year. Yeah, that'd be fun. Oh, by the way, quick tip I had. Like in case you're on the fence about trying to get into this like I was. So what I did was, before going in and spending 500 bucks on a projector, what I did was I treat, this is my house right here, this island. I treated this as my house and I said, hey, let me see if I can actually, if this actually works with DevNC Resolve and what I have in mind. So all I did was get a cheap projector from Amazon, as you can probably see. This is the one, this probably cost like 60 bucks, I guess. So that's it. So what I do is project a simple animation on the kitchen island. So that's how you know your concept works before you get into the big stuff. So I felt, okay, this looks 3D, 3D enough for me and good enough to tweak. So Yeah, it's dang so neat. That's cool. To, yeah, yeah, you don't have to jump all in at the get-go. You can go through the course, learn stuff, maybe try it on. Some people try it on, on doll houses. Yeah, so that way you that. can give it a go before you do it for the house. Yeah, my wife Jean and I went to Trans World Christmas Light Show last season, and we took a I, I took a mapping course there, and I'm like, that's dang neat. They used uh, Adobe After Effects for their yeah. software, um, but that's I've been told um, that that's more that's more to make it actual movies. Um, there's 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 two or three other softwares out there, but DaVinci that you use is free. Yeah, so After Effects and DaVinci, in terms of sheer strength, like as to what capability, they're exactly the same. It's just that After Effects you have to pay like fifty bucks a month, which I feel yeah. is pretty steep. Like you can't freely keep making shows, but in case 
So this is a website, by the way, for the course. So this course right here is the complete course where you learn everything from scratch. There are a couple of advanced courses where in case like me, you have multiple projectors or you want to do some cool effects. Those are in here too. But I would suggest doing that after the main course. And similarly, after effects, in case you're completely hands-on, you have experience with after effects and don't want to learn something new, then there's a course with using after effects as well. And that works. It's just that After Effects is paid. So I wouldn't suggest anyone to learn After Effects. If you're learning something new, might as well learn the free one. And these are the shows that you spoke about that in case you get your house map, you can pick any one of the shows. And these are available for sale. In case you're running short on time, all you do is get the map. And you don't have to get it from me. There's a bunch of vendors with all sorts of price ranges that will sell your shows. So that's the thing too. You don't have to learn DaVinci Resolve and everything. You can create your map and just have shows built for you. And what is your, I put the link again to your um, academy there in the chat and also put the discount code in there as well. Uh, let's see here. Ken, uh, Dwayne says, can you run this in conjunction with pixels and punch the video yeah. file to the projector with flights or yeah. FMP? Oh, I did have, hey, thanks for bringing this up. So this one, this was a collaboration with the Bostick Family Light Show. So we worked on it together. So like, like I said, the lights are quite bright. So Kyle had it turned up pretty dim. So as you can see, this is completely projection map, the screen right here, just a video playing because he had this particular screen. So let's go through some of the projection stuff should kick in right now. So there we go. So this is, Ooh. as you can see, the surface is all projection map in conjunction with traditional lights that he has. And he sells sequences and stuff. So, and this was done on a $200 projector. Wow. So as you can see, and some of the things look cooler in real life. As you can see, there's different textures being projected. Right. So he's running pixels. He's running the projection mapping all in all with perfect timing. It looks like. Okay, so so he is using a Falcon Media Player, and he actually has a YouTube video on his on his channel about how he synced the videos and as well as his pixel light show. So yeah, he's using a Falcon Media Player essentially to sync everything. Okay, very cool. What uh, so for folks to get started? Do folks if they if they get your academy right now, do they have time uh, to take your course and have something up for this Halloween? Oh yeah, like I, I would say, of course, if you get started, creating the setup might be the time-consuming task. You got to get the projector and make the enclosure and stuff. Once you get that done, you can make simple. If you're completely new to DaVinci Resolve. Of course, there's a little bit of a learning curve. You can make simple shows, but you can always buy shows. But I would say you can for sure get a show or two simple ones in. Because like you saw me do the bricks, it hardly took a few minutes. Yeah. Granted, I've been working for a while, but if you spend a couple of weeks, you could make two good shows. And what is your academy cost? We have not talked about that yet. Oh, yeah. So essentially, in this case, right now, the price is... 99 bucks essentially saves you all the research and hassle. And so once you click in here, in a second, I'll pause the video. So this is it. And it goes through pretty much everything. Like the setup gives you a brief overview of how DaVinci Resolve the software works. And then it goes through each step of the show creation, like how to create textures, masks, add 3D perspective, copy it, then green screen. So in case you use content from YouTube, then a couple of cool effects that you can always add to the show, like wall shattering effect, add rain, snow. Then there's some bonus effects in there. So there's all the stuff included that you need in there that comes with the show. So you, sh you should be from knowing nothing to up and running, being able to create shows in a matter of three hours. So the best part, what I personally feel the best part about the academy is, it's just three hours and you have 30 day return policy right so it's just literally me sitting at the other end of the email if you're not satisfied all you do is send in an email 
anytime you get chance within the 30 days, have a look at the 3R course, you're completely done. It's a full refund if you're not satisfied. And in case you stick around, once you go through the course, you'll also notice certain places where I've updated the course as I've learned better and easier ways to do it. So you have lifetime access to review the content as well as keep being posted with all the new stuff that I add. So that's essentially. So it's $99 and people today get a 25% off by using Correct. the discount code Crestline. So it's $75 for you folks with a money back guarantee. But I'm telling you, uh, from taking it myself, it takes you from where you absolutely know nothing to where you can you can do your own show pretty quickly. Correct. So all you do is click any other. So in this and case, it's a lot easier than doing all the research yourself. I think that was a great point you made. Yeah, like, again, you, you'll find stuff on YouTube to learn as well. It just takes you a lot of time to go through everything and filter out content. Just uh, And I'm... Personally, my wife won't let me spend a lot of money. So trust me, I have kept everything super budget friendly. I just, I'll get kicked. So like you see, the box I made is literally 50 bucks. Trust me, there's no box right. that's that budget friendly. So trust me. And once you hit, you all you need to do is put Crestline in as your discount code. Boom. And how long will that discount code be good for? Oh, I'll, I'll keep it on for the weekend. Boom. There you go. Yeah. Very nice. So does anybody have any additional questions for us about, um, and how, well, how many, um, how many, uh, shows do you have for sale on your website right now? Well, so right now I, so these are the shows I have on my site as the haunted mansion, Adam's family, this Harry Potter, I'd say like eight of them, but okay. for shows, Trust me, like in case you're buying shows, there are a lot of sites. You just don't have to go with me because I know there's not enough variety in my case. Because I, I only put up stuff that I could make in reasonable amounts of time. Gotcha. So, so here, this is a big one. There are a couple of other sites you can go to as well. That's called Jolly Holidays. Like this one here, this like Halloween, you have like 30 options. They're all 100 bucks. Very cool. So once you create your map file, there's pretty much a lot of places you can buy shows and stuff. So, yeah, you don't just have to rely on me selling shows. You can buy well, from practically anyone. It sounds like you pretty much sold everybody that's in the chat today that this is some awesome technology. Yeah. Yeah, like this is another guy that sells shows, and I, I love his content as well. He's one of the instructors on the After Effects show. So Okay. So, yeah, yeah, it's just that the technology is new, but it's surprisingly easy to achieve. And the possibilities are endless and pretty much works for any holiday. Well, Carl says that he's learned more in today's demo than he has spending hundreds of hours researching this himself, and he's still lost on it. So thank you for doing yeah. that for Carl today. Yeah, because there is so much content. When you put, put this term in, projection mapping, there's fancy stuff, like this Disney stuff, there's professional, so professional software itself cost about $400. And I'm like, gosh, I'm not spending all that money just no. without even knowing how to work that. So is, yeah, it's always a challenge to filter through all this information. Is there a fan favorite that your audience has when they're when they're watching their shows, or is there one that stands out with the audience more than others? Oh, uh, I would say the Adams Family was pretty much the fan favorite, and of course, Frozen, Let It Go, pretty much every oh, kid yeah. out there is. Because our neighborhood has a bunch of three-year-olds, so okay. things like Frozen. That's why none of my shows, when you look through it, they're not extremely scary or creepy. You could go all out and make an extremely haunted house. Like, for example, I went with this look because me being who I am, I'm like, you know what? This will look so cool. Like, uh, this will look, make the house look oh, so wow. cool and haunted. So, yeah, this is what I like. And I put a scary wolf in there and stuff. But <laughs> for the kids, it's not the best. But depending <laughs> on the neighborhood. So, so, this is what I like. But for the kids, stuff like. Oh, well, that was neat. You even had a fog effect in there. That was neat. Yeah, I have fog. There's rain going. So it's all it's all cool. So this is I had a I had my father-in-law's drone for a weekend, so I figured I'll just shoot. Okay. Some stuff. So as you can see, 
the effects are like in case in some of the videos it sounds completely fake as you can see this is my house these are some of my oh, neighbors yeah. right here you can see pretty much exactly and these two shiny doors right here this is projector one and this projector two right here right so yeah this is some of the frozen shows that we did so i think yeah frozen was always yeah you can't go wrong with frozen the songs are cool it's always an upbeat lifts your mood up very cool yeah that's so neat and you know for me the biggest selling point is there's no it doesn't take four months to install a show how, how long does it take let's get a number from you how long does it take from the time you open your front door Put your projector out until the time you're back in and you're done. How, how long does that setup take? So I'd say it mainly depends on, in terms of security, how secure you have your projector out there. Some people okay. actually have concrete poles sticking out with an extremely rigid enclosure, so they don't even bring it in. Me personally, what I have is I have my tripod sitting out there with some chains and ground anchors. So the tripod is not going anywhere. So if you want to put the show in, all I do is grab the Walmart tote that I showed you, stick it mm -hmm. on the tripod. I have four little screws that go in and plug it in and we're good to go. And that's also one of the videos you have on your Academy as well, correct? Yeah, 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 I show you the setup, mm -hmm. what, what my setup is. But yeah, it, it completely depends on how, because some people go all out with the setup and making it secure, like they have like trackers and stuff in there. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, I have, wow, like, okay. So I'm like, yeah, I, I, I put it out, run the show for like a couple of hours, like eight o'clock to midnight or something. I see people and then at night I just bring it. I just think it's more peace of mind to just bring it back in and that's it. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, Carl Carl's tells you welcome to the Christmas family. Then this is technology that people need to know about. So and I'm going to yeah, agree that, with that. that that's I'm a true agree. statement. The biggest challenge right now is most people don't know about the technology to look it up. If they looked it up, I, I feel there will be more awareness. It's just that they don't know the terms and stuff to even look for it. Fair enough. Yeah, it's projection mapping. Yeah, and I had no idea. Like, what is Cinderella's castle like 10 years ago when I went? I had no idea how to search for it. But, yeah, I'm telling you guys, three hours, you can figure out how to do this. And you don't have to drop the... Twenty thousand dollars or however, but I actually don't know how much I have in there. I think that's probably a reasonable amount. I would probably say I have in mind. And uh, and on my YouTube channel, you have stuff like this where I go over the complete cost as to how much each of those things cost and my setup as well. So in case you're interested, you can check that out. That's right. I'm, that's I'm, I'm talking about the academy. You have your own YouTube channel, Projection Mapping Academy, folks. Go over there and subscribe and tell them hi in a video. Say Charlie sent you. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Go to Projection Mapping Academy, guys, and, and uh, subscribe over there. Cool. Yeah. Feel and like I said, feel. There's my email on the website. Feel free to drop me any questions if you have any. You're yeah. most welcome. Now, is there anything that people need to know about this technology that we have not gone over yet? Are we leaving anything out? Not really. I, th I think we covered a bunch of stuff. Like, yeah, essentially, it's a projector projecting on 3D surfaces and transforming your house. That's basically it. Very nice. And make sure that, I mean, pretty much everybody here is a regular. Um we're missing a few of our regulars today. We don't do normally a Saturday video. So, well, we're actually, we're just now starting to convert from Tuesdays over to Saturdays. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, very cool. Uh, if any, does anybody have any last-minute questions uh, for myself or for our esteemed guest? Uh, but we have today people here from a couple of New Zealand folks. We've had England. We have... Um, I forget where, um, where is he at? Uh, Gert's in here somewhere. Gert was in South Africa last week. I forget. He's a world traveler. I forget what country. Belgium, maybe. He's always in a different country. Uh, so we have, we're a pretty good worldwide, uh, diverse group of people here today. Um, so if nobody has any last minute questions, and if you don't think we've forgotten to talk about anything, do you have any last minute tidbits for us before we sign off? 
I'd say at least look into the technology. A bunch of cool stuff is possible. So yeah, look I into agree. it to say the least. And uh, can can we have you back on the show sometime? Oh, of course. Yeah, I'm all I'm all here. It was a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me, Charlie. It was absolutely an absolute pleasure to introduce the technology. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll I'll do my uh, I'll do my outro here. Then I'll talk to you off channel here in a second. But uh, that's about it for today, guys. I appreciate you guys all tuning in and uh, checking us out today. Uh, I'm Charlie. Thanks for tuning in to Christmas on Crestline, guys. We'll see you in the next video.